and just, you know, peel the, uh, the shield. Well, actually, first thing you gotta do, sorry. I always forget to do this. Go ahead and put your collar on first. Go ahead and put the, uh, the, the bottom half of your dipole on. And we're just gonna go and mangle this as much as we can. And... There we go. We just want it going in the opposite direction. Just like that. And then we're going to reveal some of the center conductor. Like so. Now I'm going to reposition my camera. We'll go to the, the desk clamp side so you can see me soldering this. Here we have the bottom half of the dipole locked firmly in the clamp. And you know what? I retract my statement earlier. It is actually easier to put this bottom half on after you've pulled all of this back. Once you pull all of the shielding back, feed this through the neck and out the top. And you can expose this a little bit. And taking the soldering iron and some solder, try to get this a fix. But remember, don't use an excessive amount of heat. You don't want to melt any of the important stuff on the inside. And you especially don't want to ground anything. So you don't need an excessive amount of solder. Just get it affixed into place nicely. Not too hard. Kind of like spot soldering, you know. Instead of instead of just blobbing it on and going ape shit, just heat it up a little bit, apply a bit of solder, and just let it flow. There we go. That's going on nicely. There we go. So, make sure we get that nice and shielded up. It doesn't have to be super perfect. So, alright. Not excessively difficult. Okay, I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit before we go to the next stage. Okay. And of course, as always, pre-tin. Pre-tin. Tell you the truth, we don't even need to really do anything if, as long as this little wire, the shield, uh, the, sorry, the, the signal wire, is 2.5 centimeters, and we really don't even have to do anything. But to tell you the truth, I want a slightly more sturdy wire than this really flimsy coax. I'm going to trim this down. That's an excessive amount. Okay. And, you know, here we go. Here's our little signal wire. I'll try to do this on frame. This is actually very awkward for me. So, you'll have to forgive me if I block anything. There we go. Not the prettiest solder job in the world, but it'll work. And there we go. We have a nice little itty bitty dipole. But it's unprotected. Uh, any of the elements can destroy this. I mean, even my fingers are throwing all of that off. So I thought of something really, really ghetto-tastic took an old pen, literally, it's just an old clicker pen. Pen, hi, I'm a pen. There you go. You can cut the, uh, the pen to size. Uh, a lot of pens usually have that nice little ass end cap. You throw this in, spooge some hot glue in the ass end, or whatever, and you get yourself a nice little detachable dipole. And if you can go get your ass to the hardware store, you can go and get these little itty bitty clamps. So now you can actually go around. You can uh, glue. Go ahead and glue your your uh, your dipole, and you can actually have a clamp on dipole. So if you take mass transit a lot or in a car a lot, when you're inside of a car uh, or a train, they're made out of metal. And as we all know from hopefully from earlier segments, if I've explained, metal ref uh, metal will reflect radio waves. So if you're inside of a metal car or if you're inside of a metal train, your radio signal can't get outside. So by taking this and just clipping it outside, well, you have an antenna outside. Now you can actually propagate your signal a little bit better. Okay, for quality's sake, I'm going to be listening to this access point for a little bit. And it's got the stock and standard 
standard rubber duck antenna. And what we have done is pretty much create uh, an exact copy of that antenna. So there should be no reason that our antenna operates any poorly than the other one. So let me go on a signal bunny. And what I'm going to tell her to do is unplug that antenna and switch it out. And notice how we have no signal. She's swapping out the antenna. Right. Seems like she's starting to plug the damn thing in. There it goes. So it goes to show you that the antenna that we've created now, of course, of course, this access point is clear across my house, in my lab, cutting through two walls. And as you can hear from NetStumbler going off every two seconds, I've got currently uh, nine active access points that are interfering with me. So, it goes to show you that the antenna that we created is just as good as a rubber duck. However, because it's on the end of a cable and we can put this outside of our window or outside of a vehicle, this antenna is actually better than, uh, in its features, better than an original, an original one. I decided to fashion a dipole with the, uh, the arms being three-quarter wavelength, nine, 91 millimeters, and look at that. We've got a, a, quite a bit of difference. So we went from an itty-bitty, inky-dinky little dipole to something that's slightly bigger. So it goes to show you, now if we were to make this a full wavelength, yeah, you know, it you know, would be you know, almost 10 inches long, but still, you'd have a significant amount more gain. So it goes to show that just with a little bit of wire, a piece of coax, an appropriate connector, you can go ahead and make yourself a better antenna than what those stupid little rubber ducks have. If you have, if not the same amount of, of gain, then maybe you get a little bit more. And if you notice that now that I've had this new antenna, there aren't as many gaps in the radio signal. So really when you're making an antenna, you're not increasing, not just increasing or decreasing the signal strength itself, you're also increasing the link quality. You're making it so there's no more gaps and no more breaks. So, this is just the first part in uh, a multi-part series, so if there's any questions or comments, or if you have anything that you need to ask or would like to say, I know that I didn't cover everything, there's always the next episode. So, uh, go out, enjoy yourself, have fun, and I'm surprised that that actually just shot up so much. Wow. That is mighty nice. Can you believe that I made this out of crap? Just like, I made this out of garbage? Huh. Anyway, end of the segment. Have fun, everyone.